Hello, Reverend Nikki here. I'm inviting you to join me in a time of prayer and reflection for Easter Saturday. If you have the Holy Week resource pack, find the icon of the resurrection. The only other thing you'll need is a candle and lighter. If you don't have these to hand, it doesn't matter. Join us anyway. Welcome to our time of quiet reflection as we watch and pray by the tomb of Jesus. In the midst of life, we are in death. In the midst of sunshine, we are in the darkest night. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. Come with the dawning of the day and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. We light candles to temper the darkness of grief. A word of scripture from Mark chapter 4 verses 26 to 29. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself. First the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. Things changing, growing in secret, we do not know how. This is the way the resurrection happens. Beyond our sight, yet we will see the outcome, the harvest. The icon which we turn to now respects the mystery of the moment of resurrection. It shows us instead Christ's descent to the dead, to hell, the underworld. Christ breaks in to rescue the souls in bondage. He tramples on the gates which can't keep him out. Satan is restrained. The wreckage of his realm evident in broken chains, keys and nails strewn over the dark pit. Christ, in an irresistible surge of life, leaps toward heaven 
pulling humanity with him. A great silence reigns over the earth and a great solitude. God is dead and hell trembles. The Lord has gone to waken those who have slept for centuries. All who have died before his coming all who have died without knowing him. He has not forgotten his lost sheep. He is seeking them. Let us go with him. Get up, he calls to them. Just as he called Jairus' little daughter, back from death. Get up and let's get out of here. Look, I take you into myself. You are in me and I in you. Together we are one person, indivisible. Come on, let's go from sorrow to joy. My father is waiting for the sheep who were lost. The feast is ready in the kingdom of heaven. Our father waits for his lost ones to return. We wait for Christ's resurrection. It's hard to wait, particularly when you don't know what's going to happen. It's like that for us all at the moment, isn't it? We have no choice. We want the waiting to be over. We want life to begin again. Waiting is hard. But as the poet R.S. Thomas said, the meaning is in the waiting. So let's learn to wait well. Let us still ourselves and wait for the Lord. We commit ourselves to God. We allow our bodies to relax, releasing any tension. We observe our breath gently coming and going. We listen to the sounds around us. We become aware of the stillness that encompasses everything. Lord Jesus, in this moment of calm, we trust you and we wait.
Where is it that you are waiting? Close your eyes and imagine a garden. All around are signs of life. Birdsong, buds on the trees, flowers blooming. These beauties of nature seem at odds with your mood. You follow the same path you followed yesterday. Behind the men carrying the body of Jesus. You watched them place the still figure in its white bindings inside the tomb. There was a sense of haste. It was nearly the Sabbath when no one can be buried. Tomorrow you'll come back to complete the funeral rites you couldn't perform then. You need to say goodbye properly. You don't really know why you're here today, except that you want to be near Jesus. You're exhausted, worn out by grief. It's finished, over. The dream of a better world is gone. You still can't take it in. You sit down on a rock or on the ground, staring at the sealed tomb, the great stone blocking the entrance. At a distance there are soldiers sent to keep an eye on things, but they're not interested in you. You begin to be aware of other people nearby, people who have known Jesus. Mary, his mother, Peter, James and John, Mary Magdalene. You can talk to them if you want, or just sit and wait with them.
little by little, the day draws to its close. The people who have gathered at the tomb start to leave. You watch them go in silence, in grief too deep for words. Let us pray. Gracious God, this night seemed like the worst defeat, as though the sun would never shine again. Yet your love was too strong for death to hold. We praise and thank you that those dead and silent hours have turned in shining resurrection power to light us to new life. Your still soft call to highest heaven is ours to take for Easter hope and joy and life. We thank you, Lord. May your spirit live in us to bear your light into the darkest places. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light. Set us aflame with the fire of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good night.